afternoon, depending on whatever time you are watching this. Uh, happy Palm Sunday. As I was preparing for the message today, uh, a song kept running through my head, and I'm going to play that here for you. It's one that my children learned, and we did it last year at LCM as we had a pony that came down the center of the aisle and the children waving palm branches. Great memories, excitement. The children were excited and as we should be. We should be excited. Let me share with you from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it was written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The Gospel reading for this Palm Sunday. Hosanna! Hosanna! Wave those palms! Here comes Jesus! Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, who was the one who came to redeem us, to save us from sin and death, and be the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice that reconciles us back to the Father. Hosanna, Hosanna. Can you feel the excitement? Can you recreate that excitement in your heart? Using the eyes of our heart, wave those palms to celebrate the coming of the King. With our Lenten focus this year being all eyes on Jesus, today truly illustrates that vision, Palm Sunday the triumphant entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. All eyes were on Jesus that day, even those that just happened to be along the path. They maybe didn't even know who he was, but they got caught up in the hype and the excitement, hopping on the bandwagon, so to speak, going along with the crowd. How often does that happen to us? where we too get caught up in the moment, and it's just a fleeting moment, and then back to the ho-hum normal. No excitement, no enthusiasm about Jesus, but back to the grind of day to day, with thoughts about Jesus and who he is on the back burner, and not on the forefront of our lives. Brothers and sisters, all eyes on Jesus cannot just be during Lent, not just on Sundays, but it needs to be an everyday, living, loving relationship with him. We have to be careful that we never grow too complacent or comfortable in our relationship, but that we always keep it alive and energized by prayer and devotion, study, connecting with others who follow Jesus, and encouraging each other as we journey through life together with him. We want to have such an active relationship with Jesus that we don't even recognize what it's like when we didn't. 
However, in the development of this kind of relationship, we have to be so very careful that we're not just going through the motions of the familiar. Living on yesterday's bread, yesterday's commitments, yesterday's relationship, but that every day we are renewing and we are investing in the here and now in the everyday relationship with him. The problems come when we become so steeped in our routine and we stop paying attention to what we are doing. It can become dangerous to drive on the same road that we drive every day. It's dangerous because we stop being alert. We take things for granted and we figure we can drive the same route with our eyes closed. If something different were to happen on the road, we may not even notice it at all, at least not until it's too late. A husband and a wife can soon take for granted all the things their spouse does. In fact, they can become so used to those provisions, the meals cooked, the garbage taken out, the laundry done, the yard mowed, children taken care of, that before too long, we don't even realize the person is doing those things. And before we know it, we feel we're the only one putting anything into our relationship. It is at those points that marital problems can occur. A parent can become so used to having their child filling their life with joy that they don't appreciate their child until they move away. The same is certainly true about living in a small town. I grew up in a small town of Beardsley, Minnesota. We often would hear people gripe about how smothering a small town can be. Everyone knowing everyone's business, sometimes even before the ones involved knew. All the time, unappreciative of the friendly neighbors, the sincere good mornings and the, the wave where doors are left unlocked. And even a post office where the mail will get to you even if it's addressed wrong. We become so used to those things that we don't notice them and we don't appreciate them until they're gone. This is also the danger we face as we come to the Easter season, Holy Week, the accounts of the triumphant entry, the suffering of the cross, and the resurrection on Easter have become so familiar that most of us can easily go through the motions of the celebrations without ever allowing the message of those events to touch us in new ways. The challenge every year is to read these accounts with fresh eyes. Look with me at these familiar scene, this one of Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry of Jesus, and see if we can't see it a little differently this year. One thing that is common and that we see all very often, is we see a strong declaration of love. This is not different, but very familiar with Jesus. But what is out of character is Jesus being in the spotlight. Seemingly, throughout his ministry, he avoided the spotlight. In John chapter 2, Jesus is asked by his mother if he would help a friend at a wedding to a to avoid an embarrassing wine shortage. Jesus responded, my time has not yet come. And Jesus did not want to make a public scene. And in John chapter six, we see an occasion when Jesus felt that the people were ready to take him and make him their king by force. And in rather than enjoying the public acclaim, Jesus just left town. In fact, Whenever the ministry of Jesus seemed to be getting to a point of really uh, acknowledged success in a community, Jesus would move to a new community. On several occasions, Jesus tells those that he healed, Shh, don't tell anyone. Jesus was not looking for public demonstrations on his behalf. He was not seeking the spotlight until today. Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry. It was organized by Jesus himself, very out of character for what we know of Jesus. 
again in the Gospel of Luke. We're told that Jesus had arranged to use a donkey. He told his disciples to go to find the donkey that would be tied up outside. And if they were asked why they were taking the donkey, they were to respond, the master has need of him. Apparently, Jesus had made arrangements to use a donkey. Jesus had his parade in mind in advance of it taking place. This was not a spontaneous demonstration. Jesus intended for it to happen. The question we must ask is, is why? Why was Jesus doing this grand demonstration? It certainly was not because Jesus wanted to throw a party for himself in his own honor. When Jesus caught his first glimpse of Jerusalem, he didn't stop and pat himself on the back and, and have everybody look at him and savor the moment, what Jesus did, according to the gospel, is he wept. He cried over Jerusalem, and he weeps for us. This procession was not frivolous. It was purposeful, and it was not provoked by vanity, but by his compassion and his love. It was time for Jesus to do what he had came to do. We see that the hour has come. God was determining the timing, not man. Why was it important to Jesus that these men arrest him during Passover? Not only because there would be so many people in town, but it was because of God's plan for Jesus to die at the same time as all the other sacrificial lambs. It is likely that at the very time Jesus was dying on the cross on Good Friday, the lambs were being slaughtered for the Passover feast. He was the Lamb of God, taking away the sins of the world, and Jesus wanted it to be clear that this was a voluntary act. Jesus could have simply laid low. He could have escaped. He could have walked. But he chose to face it head on. Knowing what was before him, betrayal, humiliation, suffering, death, he chose to come to Jerusalem. Such is the magnificent love of our Savior. Jesus was not the unwilling victim of a vicious plot. He was a willing sacrifice for all of us who would believe. Now, some of you wonder if God could possibly love you. Perhaps you have failed him. You are so ashamed that it is impossible for you to imagine that God could still care about you. Brothers and sisters, look with fresh eyes at the parade into Jerusalem. Jesus is not surprised by our failures. He came to Jerusalem in order to deliver us from such things. He knows what we have done, and he wants to make us clean and to set us free. His invitation is simple. Come to me, all you who are burdened, that are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. Have you done that? Are you hiding from the very one who wants to love you more than you have ever been loved before? Maybe it's time for you to stop hiding and start believing. Maybe life is difficult for you right now with the quarantine and, and the coronavirus and, and work and family life changed. Perhaps you wonder if God is out to get you. Perhaps things are so painful in your life that you question his love for you at all. 
If that is the case, look again at the parade into Jerusalem. Realize that the Savior who gave his life for you loves you with a depth of love that is unfathomable. See him as he goes to the cross on your behalf and in your place. Realize that his love is so great that can be certain that he would not allow any needless suffering in your life. The trials that do come are purposeful and designed to lead us to something good. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. In all of this, you can greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you will have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. The coronavirus, the quarantine, the world economy being challenged, sickness, death, pain. I want you to know that these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold will be proven genuine. The refiner's and it will result in the glory and honor when Jesus Christ returns. How easy it is for us to talk about the love of God and how difficult it is for us to accept it. Do you understand that he went willingly to Jerusalem for you, for me? Brothers and sisters, God has a plan. And God's plan did not end with the coming of Christ. This world in which we live in is not running out of control. God is not surprised what is taking place in our society today. And God is not pleased with what is happening. But he's not caught off guard. The Bible is clear that there is coming a day when Jesus will return, and this time he will not come as a humble servant, but will return as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is not wringing his hands, wondering what to do. Brothers and sisters, he is in control. Do you understand that things are not out of control in your life? Do you understand that God has a plan for you too? I know from personal experience that there are times when I see what's going on in and around my life and I wonder what God is trying to do. On that day, when Jesus walked toward Jerusalem, the disciples were unaware of what God was doing. They missed the significance of that day only later did they come to see the hand of God in all that was taking place. That may be true in our own lives as well. In fact, that we don't always understand what's going on in our lives does not mean that God is not at work. Let me say that again. Just because we don't understand what's going on in our lives doesn't mean that God's not at work. He has promised that he would lead everyone who believes to him in that which is ultimately good. All things working to the good and to the glory of God. Our promise is that God knows what he's doing and he may and we may not understand, but we can trust him. In fact, God doesn't even require us to understand. He just asks us to trust him. Are you coasting in your spiritual life? Have you taken the things of God for granted? Are you listening to God's word, but hearing nothing? Perhaps it's time for us to read once again the fresh accounts of how God has revealed his love to us. Maybe it's time for us to wake up to the fact that God is on the throne of life 
Perhaps it's time for us to bow before his throne and to give him the honor and praise that he desires and he deserves. Jesus loves you. He faced the mobs for you. He endured torture for you. And he went to the cross for you. And he went there so you and I could be free. Free from sin's addiction. Free from the treadmill of chaos. And free to live. Have you responded to his invitation? He wants you to be his. Are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to follow him? Not just to church, being part of the crowd, but in your daily life, day in and day out. Are you willing to entrust to him even when the future is confusing and unknown? Believing that God has a plan. Are you willing to serve him until that day when his plan on earth is completed and fulfilled? Amen? Amen, Jesus. Hosanna, Jesus. I am yours and you are mine. All eyes on Jesus. Not just today, but always. Hosanna. God bless you. And have a wonderful Holy Week. Keeping in mind all of the events that will occur this week as we go through them. The Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, and then Easter. God bless you.